Hello, how are you doing? Good to see everyone again. So today we'll be discussing um, on adult symptoms of um, traumatic child because I come across many adults who feel nothing happened in their childhood but they embody so many symptoms of the traumatic childhood. So we'll just discuss some things. If you take yes to so many of it, it could be a pointer to the fact that um, a lot happened in your childhood than you remember or than you're willing to accept. So again, it goes back to let's see what happened then. Let's see if we can dig it. Let's see if we can do, undo some trauma narrative. So the first one, I'm not listing them in any particular order, just as it comes to me. The first one is eating disturbances. Eating the disturbances will be from anorexia to bulimia. Anorexia, those who are scared of eating, because they have um, a mis misconception of what their body looks like so they starve themselves till they are so thin then there's other spectrum of those who gorge down so much food then they induce vomiting so they don't hard weight then there's the other more subtle part of those who eat to feel good eating should be when you're hungry if you eat because you're not happy and you think that extra bottle of coke will make you happy or you're so anxious and you think if i eat a piece of cake i'll be a bit calmer or you can't sleep and you feel if you eat a big bowl of a bath that you'll be able to sleep that is eating to medicate emotional issues that's called emotional eating is oftentimes a symptom of um some form of childhood trauma especially when this is a repeated pattern in such an individual's life the other one is sleep disturbance occasionally when you're stressed you have deadlines you can't sleep that is totally fine but when it is a no it's a constant consistent thing days you sleep are fewer than days you don't sleep and you many times will need prescription pills to sleep because thoughts and worries in your head keeps you up at night or you have fears of going to sleep you have um really bad persistent nightmares especially when the nightmare is about a team all the times it's not all the time it's spiritual sometimes it's just your childhood trauma catching up with you so sleep disturbance is also a pointer to a possibility of having experienced some grossly traumatic things in childhood somatic complaints somatic complaints oftentimes are bodily symptoms that you do all the checks you do all the tests there is no cause that is found and commonly it's chest pain commonly it is tummy pain and for some people they just have chronic pains all their body is in pains and they've had all those normal medical checkups and nothing is being pointed out it could just be that your body is screaming what your mind has repressed for a long time so chronic pain many times one of the management um, modalities is psychotherapy or counseling to unravel okay what is the emotional pain that is being embodied in this individuals in, the, in this individual then another one is clingy and being clingy and having separation anxiety if you're such individual that um, maybe your partner your spouse doesn't call you and you feel abandoned and just for a few he doesn't call for a couple of days knowing fully well that something's got him in or high engaged and you feel abandoned you withdraw or you're so anxious about people leaving you, you're unduly clingy, you're scared of being alone more often than not, than not you, you try to fill up your whole day with activities and interactions, either you're with people in person or you're constantly chatting just so you have that connection, you're constantly FaceTiming with people and the likes. It could be a pointer to um, clinginess and separation anxiety, so it's something that I would also advise such an individ individual checks into. Then feeling helpless and passive in life. There are those who are so passive about their life that they literally depend on other people to make all the decisions for them, to take all the very first steps for them. It's not submission. It's not docility. It's not gentility. It's passivity about life. Many times a time there was a time in their life where someone had to take control and they had no say. And they learned very early in life that to have peace 
You just have to leave it to this person. That's the only way you'll be loved. That's the only way you'll be accepted. And many times it was the parent who took 100% responsibility. Such individuals never learned independence, never learned to stand up for themselves. They never learned autonomy. Many times it's an adult symptom of childhood, um, childhood traumas. Then experiencing grief three to three, six months after the event happened. Now, what do I mean by this? Someone dies, it's normal you feel grief. But the grief of the death then goes on for over half a year. That grief just triggered a deeper grief of childhood. Many times it's fear of aloneness. Many times it's isolation. Some deep-seated pain that the grief of what you lost or who you lost has triggered that. It could be that it's even a property that got lost. A job was taken. And the person's sense of worth and identity is badly battered by the singular experience of having lost a job. That was a trigger for some massive childhood trauma that has not been unraveled. So it's worth exploring. Then becoming fascinated by death could be by way of depression. May, may also not be depression. May just be that, that such an individual constantly takes risky actions. Risky actions could be subtle things like visiting hotels and not using protection. Those are risky actions. Knowing fully well that HIV, hepatitis B and the other spectrums are there. Now, many times these individuals don't even do it on a conscious level. It's at a subconscious level, like an automatic um, button that is playing in their life. Those will be the same people who take up all these risky adventures, jumping off a bridge in the name of what we are trying to see how adventurous we can be. Being fascinated with death, toying with death, is oftentimes um, some childhood desire to be alienated as a child just so that they could end the pain, the dread, the isolation that they experienced in their childhood. It's not normal is a traumatic symptom of something bad having happened in childhood <clears throat> then again also being <clears throat> observed excuse me obsessed with safety these are those individuals who are hyper vigilant looks a bit like OCD they check the doors like four times um they lock severally <laughs> many Africans are like that we lock our door and check again and check again and check again is trust issues then there's the OCD part of those who would wash and clean everything because they can't afford to have the littlest of germs even long after the disinfection proper has been done they still continue to do being obsessed with safety in any form whether physical safety health safety could also be a trauma symptom then suddenly having problems sleeping eating or suddenly have, having hunger and attention issues. You were good before and all of a sudden you're having fits of rage. Uncontrollable is persistent. It could be that life now has triggered some of the things that have been buried in childhood. All of a sudden um, such an individual is having issues with attention. is dissociating. You're reading a book and you find that your mind is not there. You got from page one to be 20 and you can't remember anything you read you're having a conversation with someone and you ask who was the last thing i said or you can't remember the last thing the person said you went from point a to point b and you don't know how you got there you enter a room and you start turning around asking yourself what am i doing in this room what am i looking for in this room you pick a phone to call someone and you're asking yourself okay who did i want to call i can't remember the name i can't remember the name it's some bit of dissociation this dissociation is the ingenious way our mind saved us as children. Why there is a fight and flight response? Most children could not fight their parents or take a flight from their caregivers when they were being assaulted, traumatized, abused, ne neglected, abandoned, and the likes. So the way they coped was to freeze. So that leads us to the third um, stress response. They freeze the emotions. So they are dear in body, but they take a flight emotionally. Even, that was just the mind being ingenious. That was the only way they could survive the traumas of their childhood. But then this, is, this becomes an adult 
with having serious challenges at work, having serious challenges, struggling academically, not because they're not innately intelligent. It has nothing to do with intellect. It's just that their mind takes them off while their body is there. So they're in the lecture hall, really. But it may very well not be there. It's just the body that is there. If you find that you struggle with that, that could be a pointer to the fact that you have some traumatic occurrences in your childhood. Then, um, persistent, poor, unfulfilling, chaotic relationships. You have one relationship that is chaotic. That doesn't mean that your childhood was traumatic. It could be that the partner has an issue. But if you find that you're always having repeated patterns of failing relationship, nothing seems to work as a lady or as a man. Is a pointer to the fact that you could have some attachment disorders. Attachment disorders, again, is at the backdrop of childhood trauma. So if an individual sees that relationships never seem to work, it could be a pointer to the fact that so many things were broken in childhood, playing out a narrative in their relationship now that they're adults. <clears throat> the lack of trust for others, again, they are those who don't trust any, anybody. Trust is end, I agree. But when you put it across board that nobody can be trusted, it could be that um, your trust was badly broken in childhood. So your coping mechanism in life was place everybody on that radar of they can be trusted until they prove themselves over and over and over again. So now what does this does for such an individual is they don't have friends, they don't have acquaintances, they don't have confidence. They are fiercely independent. They want to do life alone because they can't really trust to lean on another person. Will such an individual catch me or would they let me fall? Because their caregivers, a child was highly unpredictable when it was not someone they could trust was not someone they could rely on. So they learned very on in life that if you have to do things, you have to do it yourself. You have to trust yourself alone. You can't really afford to lean on people. People will disappoint you. That's the only way you can get um, get ahead and be okay without having your hearts broken. Then mood changes and emotional instability. Oh, yes. Mood changes would um, be from unhappiness and happiness flips like a light switch. Then down to the spectrum of anxiety, depression, and of course, um, the old spectrum of mood disorders. Oftentimes, again, it's from childhood. Now, a child learns to regulate their emotions through their parents. It's the parents that mirror such self-regulation to them. But many people had a traumatic childhood. Such parents even have their own traumas. We're not even self-aware. We're not regulated themselves. So they couldn't offer it to such an individual. So they learned to swing painfully through the scales of mood disorders. They feel all the emotions fully without anybody telling them and showing them how to calm down. If it's a feel of rich, they feel everything without anybody showing them how to calm down either. So... That becomes their template. If they are sad, they are extremely sad. If they are happy, they are extremely happy. There's no middle ground for them. And when this um, becomes a pattern, it can tilt them very easily into the spectrum of anxiety or depression based on whatever major thing is happening in their life at that point in time. Then I already mentioned problem, problem with focus, attention and concentration, which is dissociation. Then pro problematic substance use. <coughs> <clears throat> for what is worth, substance and behavior use I'll use that one. For what is worth addictions of any type to drugs, to sex, to um, work, to shopping, to anything is at best a coping mechanism for some deep seated wants. So uh, uh, that is a big topic that I can't really afford to go into, into in this video. But an individual who has a problematic substance use, you try to stop, you cannot. Not that you just experimented a couple of days with friends and you were good. And you never, never went back to it, which I would not recommend, by the way. But you find that you try to stop, you go back to it, you try to stop, you go back to it. It feels like these drugs or this behavior has a hold on you. That could be a tell 
to the fact that a lot happened in childhood and until such traumas are undone and unraveled and healed they will still con continue to feed the need to use those drugs to soothe those childhood pain showing up in the adult body okay and finally will be um aggression physical aggression and um anger outbursts repeated anger outbursts occasionally or once a very sparingly could be that something really pushed such an individual to the wall but someone who has a personality and say okay this is a very hungry person or this man this woman is very aggressive talks is really loud is really rude is really pushy likes to get their way at all costs again is a coping mechanism is a skill that was the way they survived their childhood they had to be pushy otherwise they were not taken serious they had to be pushy that was the only way they could get their needs met they had to be pushy otherwise people would walk over them because the people that had to be the um the sounding board for their needs for their emotions were either negligent had their own issues abandoned them abused them and all the spectrum of things that can happen from childhood trauma so such an individual would need to self-examine and do a self-inquiry to see what went wrong. Why do I need to be aggressive to feel that I'm worth something? Deep down, it's, it has to do with uh, questioning their sense of worth and their sense of identity. Without me pushing my way, I may not get it. Without me being pushy and being really forceful, I may not be taking it serious. Seriously, I may not be seen as a being important. So by and large, I think th that will summarize some um, trauma symptoms that an adult should look for in themselves to see if something happened that is significant enough to um, be processed. That something happened in their childhood that they will need to process as an adult. So by and large, I wish you the very best. See which fits, see which shoe fits. And reach out to someone who is skilled to be of help so until next time i wish you a wonderful wonderful time bye stay blessed